Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be going through quick drop shortcuts. Now, I've actually got a series on quick drop shortcuts that show you how to insert functions, remove functions, etc. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own quick drop shortcuts. As a quick reminder, this is what quick drop shortcuts can do. So let's say we select some items, go Control Space, and then Control Shift W. You can see those items have been auto wired and cleaned up. We could select a particular function and then change it to be, let's say, write from text file to read from text file by going Control and P. You can see that function changed. Now let's go through how we can create our own quick drop shortcuts. Before we get started, I just want to point out that I'm using a brand new microphone. Um, and so if you can notice a difference in the audio quality in my, in my videos, please let me know in the comments below. And secondly, I really appreciate all of you who have subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so below. Let's get started. To create a quick drop shortcut, what we're going to do is head over to Program Files, National Instruments, your chosen version of LabVIEW, and ideally you choose an old version of LabVIEW so it's forward compatible. Resources, Dialog, and then Quick Drop. Then we're going to look for the Quick Drop plugin template with the .vit extension. Let's open up this template. And notice because it's a template, it's actually opened an instance of that template. So it's called Quick Drop Plugin Template 1.vi. Now, before we go any further, let's just save this VI by clicking Control S. And we're going to save this in the same file location as earlier. So let's copy and paste this, go to Plugins. And then we can name our Quick Drop shortcut. So I'm going to name this Quick Drop shortcut as Tom's Ladder Adventure. And we'll click OK. I'll save that. The next thing I'm going to do is open up the VI documentation. So if I click Control I, and then go to documentation, notice how in the VI description here, we're asked to write one or two sentences to describe what this quick drop shortcut is going to do. And then we have to give it a default character. So let's just go ahead and write a couple of sentences. So the description I've given is that this is a demo to create a quick drop shortcut. And the default shortcut I'm going to give will be S. Then we can click OK. Theoretically, that's everything we need to do to get this quick drop shortcut up and running. So if we restarted LabVIEW, we'd have access to this shortcut. But let's just put in a little one button dialog box to prove that it works. So let's press Control e to head over to the block diagram and we'll come on to what all of this is in a bit. But for now, let's just place down a one button dialog onto the block diagram. I'll create a constant saying quick drop shortcut. And let's press Control q to close down LabVIEW. If we open up LabVIEW again, open up version, in my case, 2015. As soon as we open up a block diagram, we should press Control space, Control S, and that one button dialog box should appear. So let's open up a new VI. So Control space and Control S. And yep, we've got our QDSC uh, quick drop shortcut dialog box there. Great, so our quick drop shortcut already works. Now let's just go into a bit more detail about where that documentation came in, because it said you had to write one or two sentences. Let's press Control Space again and head over to Configure. Within Configure, let's go to Control Key Shortcuts. And notice how we have an extra line item called Tom's Ladder Adventure. And that is the name I gave my quick drop shortcut. That's the thing I named the VI. It's got the documentation here, and I've got the default shortcut as S. So we'll cancel that. 
let's head back over to the block diagram of our quick drop shortcut to find out what it can actually do and what information we can get. This boolean here will tell us if quick drop was opened on the front panel or the block diagram. Perhaps you'll want different behaviors to occur depending on which panel you're viewing the quick drop on. Next, we could have a look at see, okay, was shift pressed? Perhaps if you click shift, you want a different behavior to happen as opposed to not shift. For example, the quick drop shortcut control W is auto wire, but control shift W is auto wire and cleanup. So you could add on or append extra functionality with the shift operator. At the bottom, we have the quick drop combo box reference. Now that's really cool to find out, hey, what was the user typing when quick drop was opened up? Just to demonstrate some of the lesser known features about quick drop shortcuts when people create their own, let's just demonstrate how you can see what the user is typing. So I'm going to drop down a property node. I'll just copy this property node here and wire in the uh, combo box reference. I'm then going to go down to text and then select text. Now the text out of here is going to be what the user typed as they clicked the quick drop shortcut. So let's just try this out. So our one button dialog box is going to flash up and say QDSC exclamation point and then the button will be whatever the user types in as they use the quick drop shortcut. So let's just save this VI and open up quick drop, type in a message and then do control and S. Notice how we've got QDSC and then our hello with a little smiley face. If we go back to our quick drop shortcut, let's see where we opened quick drop on the front panel or the block diagram. So let's look at this boolean here and just wire that down to a select. So we'll save this, head back over to LabVIEW, maybe give a little message, ASDF, and then Control S. And it shows I open this on the block diagram. Let's try on the front panel. We don't need to give it a message, it's just Control S, and it says front panel. Perfect. Now let's see what else is on this block diagram. Well, quite nicely, it gives us the file locations. So if you didn't catch it earlier in the video, in your quick drop shortcut, it tells you to save this VI in Lavi resources, dialog, quick drop, and plugins. Now, typically, if you're creating an installer, such as a VIP via VI package manager, this is the file location you will use. But if you want your quick drop shortcut to be valid for every version of LabVIEW greater than the version of LabVIEW you're developing this in, save it in LabVIEW data in the quick drop plugins subfolder. Now LabVIEW data is going to be in your my documents folder uh, on your PC, assuming you're using Windows. Let's have a look at some of the other features that have been put in this template. I think the most obvious one here is a selection list or cell list. So if the user selected any items when they opened up QuickDrop, a reference to each of those items will be in this reference array here. So as a quick demonstration, let's say, oh, for every, for every sub VI that was selected, I want to show its label. So let's write that piece of code. So from this selection list, this is going to output just a generic reference, which I need to typecast down to, let's say, a sub VI reference. To do that, I'm going to go to two more specific, then use a quick drop shortcut quite aptly of control I, and then a class specifier constant. Yeah, and let's see if we can remember where um, sub VI is. I think it's under node. There you go, sub VI and sub VI. Great, so I'm essentially forcing all of these generic references down to a sub VI reference. Now, if the item selected wasn't a sub VI, then we're going to get an error out of here. So we can do some 
um, error handling. So I'll just create some more space and delete this as well and put down a K structure. And we'll wire in our error cluster. So if we don't get an error, let's say we want to show the label. So we'll take a property node, wire up that, wire up the reference. We'll go down to label, in then visible, and then place down a constant. Make that true. I'll pass that reference out so we can close it. So now, if any sub VI was selected, we're going to show its label. However, if we get an error, we just want to close the reference straight away. So I'm going to take the reference here and wire that through to close. I will take the error cluster from before the two more specific class. There we go. Another thing we need to do is make sure we set this boolean to true. So if we do any LabVIEW scripting like we're doing here and we know it's scripting with the blue nodes, we must set this to true. That's because it's going to set transaction end undo to execute. Now transaction begin undo and transaction and transaction end undo allow LabVIEW to do things like control Z and control shift Z for undo and redo functionality. So let's save this. And I've got a couple of sub VIs down here. So if I do control space control S, notice how those labels have appeared. Now let's control Z. There you go. So now I've shown that you have undo capability now with those transactions. I want to point you towards the Quick Drop Enthusiasts forum page on the NI website. On this forum page, you'll see loads of questions people have asked about best practices for creating their own Quick Drop shortcuts. You'll see various surveys, and you'll also see lots and lots of community made Quick Drop shortcuts. So if you think you want to create a Quick Drop shortcut, have a look at this Enthusiasts page and there's a list here of all of the community quick drop shortcuts and see if it's a already being created but you could also see whether other people would like to use the tool as well so you could create a tool and distribute it to all the other LabVIEW developers i really hope this video has been of use to you and you've learned something new if you have drop it a like and subscribe and leave a comment below to say hello see you soon everyone